Okay, so let's jump into this video and talk about working with our closed loop fuel trims in our GM Gen 4 family of ECUs. So our closed loop correction is going to be taking a look at what the target air fuel is going to be that we program in our software. And it's going to be taking a look at what our primary or the front O2 sensors are registering for the oxygen content that's going to be in our exhaust. So as we're driving around, it's going to constantly compare the target versus the actual and then the computer is going to be making adjustments. Now we're going to have a short term and a long term trim that's going to be making our adjustments. The short term is going to be the immediate reaction to the difference of the reading between again the target and the actual air fuel. And then the long term is going to be taking a look at that short term as we're driving around and constantly keeping it in the back of its memory. And it's going to be filling out a long term base table. So as we're driving around, if it's constantly having to add five or 10% on the short term, it's going to absorb that into the long term. The long term would then be five or 10%. And then the short term would be able to trim just the very small differences as we're seeing between our actual air fuel and the target air fuel. So we're going over all this for our E40, E67, and our E38 PCM. So we have an understanding of how it's going to work in each of these ECU types. Without further wait, let's jump in so we can check this out. Okay, so let's get started here. We're going to be taking a look at the closed loop operation in our GM Gen 4 PCMs. So what we're going to find here is that as we're driving around, we're going to be in this closed loop operation at idle and part throttle. And we're going to be needing to understand how this is going to work so that we can appropriately program our tables and understand the data as we're reviewing our data log or if we're moving into certain tables to make adjustments. So we're going to find that we have a primary O2 sensor. That's going to be the first O2 sensor installed in our exhaust. So we have our stock exhaust manifolds or headers and we have that first bung. That's going to be our primary O2 sensor that we install into that bung. And we'll find that it's going to be operating in a 0 to 1 volt scale or a 0 to 1000 millivolt scale. So if we're talking in the programming language in a GM ECU, it's going to be in millivolts. So we'll find that sensor is accurate right around 450 to 500 millivolts. And that should correspond to the approximate point of stoichiometric or 14.7. So that's going to be what we usually try to shoot for when we're going in and we're operating in closed loop. We're going to find that if it's going to go below that voltage, it's going to be running rich and making some adjustments. And if it's going to go above that voltage, it's going to be running lean and starting to make some adjustments. And we'll find the adjustments are made by a short term fuel trim. And that's going to be the instantaneous difference between our target air fuel of that 14.7, 14.6, and the actual of whatever our sensor is reading in our exhaust. So it's constantly going to be trimming in our short term trim plus or minus a percentage of fuel. And then we're going to find that we have a long term fuel trim. That's going to be constantly taking a look at our short term adjustment. And if it's seeing a trend that it's always adding 5% or always taking out 10%, our long-term trim will start to absorb that. So our short-term has less work to do over time. So we're gonna have a short and a long-term trim. And we can disable closed loop altogether, or we can disable our long-term and just run it in a short-term trim. So we have some options in our programming, but we can use this to guide us tuning our idle and part throttle operation. Now, once we go into wide open throttle, we need to run a wide band because our narrow band sensor isn't gonna be accurate. Um, and we're not gonna have enough of a usable scale from the sensor to really make adjustments properly. So we're gonna be taking a look at using a wide band in that process a little bit later on in the training course. But for right now, we need to focus on just the closed loop and how it's gonna be working with the narrow band sensor. So let's move in here. We're gonna jump into our engine. We're gonna go from engine here in general to idle to airflow to fuel. Then we're gonna find here under general, we have our Stoich air fuel. If we click on this, this is gonna be the table that's gonna define what our 